Welcome to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, and I'm here today with Michael Golayu to talk about the Women's March that took place this past Saturday and what we'll be doing and looking forward to beyond the march. Hi, welcome, Michael. Oh, I thank you for having me. Oh, it's wonderful to have you here, and, and so timely, right after the march took place a few days ago here in Honolulu, as well as in numerous cities across uh, 50 states, and I think all five continents. We hit all, all seven continents. Seven continents. <laughs> seven continents. Um, yes, uh, the great thing about this whole Women's March is that it actually started here in Hawaii with Teresa Shook. Uh, she went to bed on November 8th, like many of us, to spade at the results of the national election, just learning how to do a uh, Facebook event mm -hmm. on Pantsuit Nation, set it up, went to bed with 40 people saying, oh, I want to go. She woke up the next morning with 10,000 people saying, I'll meet you there. Mm -hmm. And Facebook shut it down because they have a 10,000 person cap on an individual and they wanted to make sure this was a real thing. And it was. And you saw the seeds of this wonderful woman, Teresa, from Hana Maui, who, mm -hmm. went to, who had an idea that blossomed into this uh, uh, circle of aloha that encapsulated the entire globe because we had marches from New Zealand, Australia, all around the world and back here to Hawaii. And it was, we got to start the idea here in Hawaii and we in, encapsulated the globe in aloha. Mm -hmm. uh, by, and then we also got to close out the marches because we were the last marches that took place. That's great. Yeah, that's a great way to think about it. I didn't, I didn't think about it that way, that it was conceived here and that we were, we were the last march in the world, I mean, given our time zone. Exactly. That's and it great. worked out, it just worked out that way. And it's, uh, everybody's like, oh, so you ended it there. I go, no, we ended the marches and we're mm -hmm. working forward to other things. But uh, if we look at what we did here in Hawaii, it's amazing. The amazing turnout, the uh, people that opened their hearts, their wallets to all, uh, all the different sister marches, as we called them, uh, across the state. We had something on uh, Kauai, uh, almost 2,000 people showed up there. We mm -hmm. had over 10,000 people show up here in Honolulu. Mm -hmm. um, and on Molokai, almost 200 people there. Uh, Maui, we had 5,000 at UH, uh, at the UH Maui campus there. And then uh, in Hana, they had something there as well, almost 300 people there. Um, and then in the Big Island, you had Kona with almost 5,000 people mm -hmm. there, mm -hmm. and Hilo over 2,000 thousand people showing up there. These are numbers you just don't hear. Yeah. It was from a grassroots level up. We had no money to buy buses or get buses. People had to show up under their own power. And we didn't have the greatest weather on Saturday, mm -hmm. but the determination you saw that people showed up, they brought their families. You looked out into the crowds and the pictures. If you go to our, um, our Facebook page, you'll see all the different pictures. Those pictures show look like Hawaii. It mm -hmm. is the diversity city of Hawaii shows up at our marches, showed up at all of them across the state. So this was a local born idea that was um, embraced with aloha by everybody. And we could not be prouder of our, our state and the, our wonderful coordinators across the state, across the world. Um, last time I checked, we were at 672 sister marches around the world with almost five point, a little, almost 5 million people Incredible. participating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'm really happy to have you here because you you, you played a you know a, an important role in producing the march here in in Honolulu and supporting the march, sending um, some some of our members from Hawaii to the DC march, and and so tell us a bit about the organizing, the genesis. What inspired it? What inspired it was the Teresa Shook's Facebook post, um, and then it just began organically. It just went organically from there. Um, the national team was led by um, accidental activists. Mm -hmm. None of them had, none of our national team really had any background in uh, activism work. They, we had, but they all came together and they worked as a close knit team. And it just shows if, uh, across the board and everything that there was a lot of thought and caring and consideration, making sure that yes, this was the Women's March mm -hmm. led by women, but to include everybody and mm -hmm. making sure nobody felt left out um, across the board. Mm -hmm. So, um, here in Hawaii, 
our leader at the time was Sherry Campagna, who's still our state coordinator. Um, I've known her husband for years, and I called her up when I heard that she was in charge, and I said, how can I help? Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, I'm producing Oahu, helping out where I can with the neighbor islands and providing graphic support to our Oahu, uh, to our, our Hawaii, uh, mm -hmm. Ohana, that went to D.C. We had over 200 people from Hawaii that traveled under their own dime now, mind you, mm -hmm. to march on Washington to represent Hawaii. Well, it was pretty incredible. And so everybody was inspired um, by, by Teresa's message um, and, and wanting to be inclusive. So, so bringing up not just women's issues, although it was, I mean, there, there, there was concern about, like, I guess, gender-related issues and how some of, uh, you know, the new administration uh, positions might affect women, but also trying to be very inclusive of, of some other areas that might be uh, affected. Oh, definitely. Making sure that, because people think, oh, this is just women's issues, but I'm like, there's no planet, there are no women. So the environment, economic justice, uh, making sure that we look out for each other. And so the, you, we made sure here in Hawaii, and you also, if you watch the videos from the um, speeches at, in D.C., is that it was a very inclusive, very pro-issue. This wasn't an anti there were, were there anti-signs out there? Absolutely. But this was very much a concerted effort making sure that people understood that we were talking about the issues and not about the person. That mm -hmm. we were on our organizational level that we made sure that everybody who had something to say, that wanted something to say, had a chance here in whole, at, at almost at every stage, had a chance to get up there and have their, have their voices heard. And some people didn't, you're not going to agree with everything that everybody's mm -hmm. going to say, and that's okay. Mm -hmm. But we, show, we, we did our best to make sure everybody was respected, and we gave them the opportunity to have their voices heard. And I think it showed in the, um, the fact that there was not one arrest in all those 600 plus, almost 700 marches mm -hmm. across the globe. Nobody got arrested. There was no fights. There was no nothing. And I think it all goes, comes back to the fact that it, the positive message and the reason that Teresa started the whole thing about making sure that it was a message of aloha, a message of love, mm -hmm. a message of concern for each other, mm -hmm. to making sure that we are t looking out for one another. And, and I believe that is what helped make sure that each and everybody, each and every one of those marches were so uh, safe mm -hmm. and inviting. Mm -hmm. And very inclusive. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess that's one of the themes that we seem to see out of it. And, mm -hmm. and you know, it's great that uh, a man, you are part of the organizing team and, and to see also have seen so many men out there in the march. It was, you know, it's called a women's march, mm -hmm. but, you know, true to the theme, it wasn't limited to, to that particular group. Oh yeah, we, got, we kept getting messages on Facebook. Oh, can my husband come? Can my brother come and we're like yes of course and he is we put it on all our stuff this is a women's march but it's open to anyone that supports women's rights and that was the that was basically our the bar we set as long as you support women's rights whatever that means to you mm -hmm. we didn't put a definer on that uh, we didn't have it's a free speech we were we marched under the free speech uh, well using the First Amendment while we still can uh, uh, making sure that people had the right to whatever sign they wanted, whatever message they wanted to get out. And we didn't see some of the nasty signs or that some people were worried about. Mm -hmm. There was some very clever artwork mm -hmm. out there. And we're really happy to announce that um, Museum, mm -hmm. which is the museum there in D.C., is now collecting the signs from asking everybody to collect signs from your state to represent your state. Mm -hmm. They're going to do a collection. Mm -hmm. And so we put the call out today for those that actually had signs that last in the weather here in Oahu, and we're mm -hmm. going to work with our coordinators on the neighbor islands to make sure that Hawaii is represented there right. and um, figure out what we do with the other signs because we want to because we want to make sure that people remember this and remember the the differences of opinions that were out there and that how inclusive it was mm -hmm. and uh, how everybody's creativity came out mm -hmm. and there was a lot of love and cheekiness in the signs and that's yeah, just great uh -huh. and so it was yeah there were some fun interesting and, and very clever ones mm -hmm. and were you was Teresa and and you and others who were organizing here in, in our state were you surprised at the turnout here and, and beyond around the world in my conversation with Teresa yes she was she was surprised at the total 
global totality of the event, how, how people embraced her idea. Uh, us in, here on Oahu, uh, me and the co-chairs, we were watching the metrics, especially me being watching the logistics, making sure we were prepared for it. And we just see the numbers going up. Um, we used Eventbrite to make sure, to see how many people, there were free tickets, but we helping us gauge our, mm -hmm. our turnout on um, mm -hmm. Facebook. And uh, we, I was thinking we'd get six to 7,000, maybe eight. I was blown away at that, the fact that we were able to wrap the entire route, which is a one mile route, uh, almost one and a half times. Because mm -hmm. you saw the front of the march come in, and I look back and at the end of the march, and there's like at least several thousand, uh, at least a couple thousand people left to get back on the, mm -hmm. get on the march route. And, um, I know my uh, cohorts on Maui, Robin and Kat on Hilo and Luli and Kona, they were just blown away by the numbers. Mm -hmm. and, uh, Emily and Paul over there in Kauai, that they were blown away as well. Mm -hmm. That their, their turnout was historic. And we also saw people come out and march in Molokai. Molokai, they had, mm -hmm. uh, their their march came online at Thursday before the march. Wow. And oh. they had 200, over oh, 200 people. Over two days before the march? Two days wow. before the march uh -huh. and they, it just shows the, uh, the openness and the acceptance and the uh, that people want to have their voices heard and that they want to make a stand mm -hmm. and the, the importance of sending this message on uh, the new administration's first day in office full full first day that we are here we are part of this country and our concerns need to be your concerns mm -hmm. and if you are not going to answer to us we will be there to make sure you hear us mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so part of it was concern that that there might be some people who who might not be uh, represented effectively, you think? Oh, yeah, definitely. This administration, none, uh, I, I have yet to hear of one inclusive person to be part of the new administration. And, and so I think that was part of the impetus that got so many people out. They saw um, his cabinet picks. Mm -hmm. They saw the things. And then in the first day, his executive orders, uh, I think, got a bunch of people also riled up to make sure that they showed up and made sure their voices were heard. And mm -hmm. so um, that now the, the big goal is how do we harness that to move forward? Mm -hmm. And we have some plans on that, uh, which I will share in our next segment. Mm -hmm. That's great. And so far, our, uh, what do you think the effect has been of it, these marches? The effect so far has been one of hope, is giving people hope, is giving people a reason to think beyond tomorrow, think, look to the future, that we can survive this if we stand together. We stand united against his policies of dis uh, discrimination and bigotry and disregard for our environment. Mm -hmm. That if we stand together, we can make a difference and we can hold everybody accountable from the new federal administration to our local government that just started mm -hmm. with the legislative session. That mm -hmm. we hope that they, they paid loud, that they pay attention to uh, people came out and we want to see them pass laws that repudiate everything that the Trump administration is doing. Okay, thank you, Michael. Mm -hmm. All right, so I am Grace Chang, your host of Global Connections with Michael Goliou, and we'll be back in a minute. Aloha, I'm Kaui Lucas, host of Hawaii is My Mainland every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. I also have a blog of the same name at kauilucas.com where you can see all of my past shows. Join me this Friday and every Friday at 3 p.m. Aloha. Aloha. My name is Richard Emery, host of Condo Insider. More than a third of Hawaii's population live in some form of association, and our show is all about educating board members and owners about their responsibilities and obligations and providing solutions for a great association. You can watch me live on Thursdays, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. each week. Aloha. Aloha and Happy New Year. It's 2017. Please keep up with me on Power Up Hawaii, where Hawaii comes together to talk about a clean and just energy future. Please join me on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock. Mahalo. Oh, 
Aloha. Welcome back to Global Connections. I'm your host, Grace Chang, here with Michael Goliou, and we're talking about the Women's March that took place this Saturday here in Hawaii and across the globe. And we're also going to be talking about what to expect next. So welcome back, Michael. Why, thank you. Uh, that's the big question, what's next? And everybody's like thinking, oh, the march was the end. And the march wasn't the end or even a beginning. It's a continuation of a struggle that's been going on for eons. I believe it's a reinvigoration of fights for civil rights, fights for ensuring that women are treated equally across the board. Uh, but what's next is we we encourage everybody to go to our new website. It's womensmarchhawaii.com. Mm -hmm. You'll see we have a list of action items there from National that's uh, 100 days, 10 action items to take, um, and it's there so people don't get burnt out. Mm -hmm. We have some very new activists involved with us, and we want to make sure that they know what they can do to make a difference, have their voices heard, but also at the same time not to get, oh my God, do everything at once and just get burnt out and not be there, because we have... Uh, well, less than four years now of the new administration, to, but to be make sure that we're there. And we also have added that to our own things here locally. One of the things we're encouraging people to do is sign up for our email list. And there's a link right there on our, our mm -hmm. front page, uh, Hawaii, womensmarchhawaii.com. Click on that, sign up for the, and you'll get email alerts from us. Mm -hmm. uh, we encourage people, we have wonderful shirts uh, still mm -hmm. for sale they, uh, from all the different marches. Uh, they're only, like, they're only going to be available for a limited time. Huh. You purchase those. That's how we funded a lot of the uh, march. Mm -hmm. Almost half of our, over half of our, actually, almost three, half of our march was funded by uh, the profits from t-shirt sales from Bonfire. Mm -hmm. um, and the other one was donations. And we had donations from as little as $5, and we had a couple thousand dollar donations and mm -hmm. more. Um, but those were, it was, sh it basically cost us like, Way, way too much to put on the march, but we did it in a way that people were able to see, hear, and go to the bathroom. Those mm -hmm. are the three things. That Very you important. Are those important <laughs> things. And it's no small task to be able to take, to make sure we were able to plan properly to take care of everybody's needs, and we did our best. Uh, but that, I think that caring in that shows that we were gonna care about the march, we're gonna care about them as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Um, also on the website, you'll find our support, supporting organization, or organizations. Mm -hmm. We had, for Oahu, we had over 55 different supporting organizations when it was all oh, said really? and done. Oh, uh really? -huh. And we're putting, the, we're going to be listing, we have them, the ones that have given us call to actions right now. Okay. Listing uh -huh. them on our website. Okay. The website's in flux. It's, mm -hmm. we're in the process of building it out, flushing it out. In the end, mm -hmm. we want to view it as a resource for mm -hmm. everybody, not just women, mm -hmm. for the, uh, uh, with, but with an emphasis on women's needs mm -hmm. and women organizations where they can turn to for help. Um, or they can turn to, I want to help, who needs help? And they mm -hmm. find the organization that they want to help out with because if you're really invested in an organization, mm -hmm. you're invested in their mission, you're going to be a uh, you're going to be a longtime volunteer mm -hmm. or supporter of that group. So we have a bunch of different ones already listed there with their call to actions. But in the end, we're going to have pages set up for each island because okay. uh -huh. we are now a statewide organization mm -hmm. with our people on each of the different islands as our touchstones as our coordinators there mm -hmm. to make sure that we're able to organize for the next steps to because um, the next big thing we're looking at is. Is, yeah, I guess it's gonna, uh, is, uh, International Women's Day on March 8th. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna ha we're working to have an event on every island. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, to recognize that uh, and to make sure that pe and to keep people looking towards the next thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, we realize that we can't do it all. We're not gonna try to do it all. Mm -hmm. We're gonna support our supporting organizations and try to get the word out and support them. Mm -hmm. And do what we can to help keep the momentum going forward. Um, one of the other things we're in the process of doing is the bill cutoff was yesterday, I believe, and we're putting together, uh, the, we're looking at all the bills and seeing which bills we can support, mm -hmm. which bills we are gonna oppose, and I'll let people know. And those, and try, get the, get all these wonderful people that are, that supported us during the mm -hmm. marches engaged in the legislative mm -hmm. process. Let their legislators know where they stand on mm -hmm. these issues. And make sure our supporters know our Ohana, mm -hmm. uh, know who, 
that they know we need their elected officials need to know who they are and what they support and that they vote and that they're going to be there and they're going to keep an eye on them. Mm -hmm. We're going to hold them accountable. We're going to hold everybody accountable. We're going to do our best to hold the federal government, but we're also going to hold them accountable mm -hmm. too to make sure that we women have full access to uh, reproductive care, that we're looking at universal health care, we're looking at equal pay for equal work, we're looking at the issues, the environment. Uh, so we, to make sure that we leave this planet better than we found it and we have an organization and a structure that will mm -hmm. live beyond the march, mm -hmm. live beyond hopefully us yeah. in the core group. Um, I mentioned a few names. There's uh, like on the uh, Sherry Campagna's was the touchstone with the Nationals. She reached mm -hmm. out to them. They brought her on board, and then Sherry reached out to a bunch of the rest of us. That mm -hmm. myself included, Amelia from Molokai, mm -hmm. uh, Carrie from Seeds of Peace. Mm -hmm. uh, there's an amazing group of women that I've been had the honor to work with. Mm -hmm. And someone goes, "How does it feel to be the only guy in the room?" And I'm like. I've been the only guy in certain a lot of rooms that I've worked with, and it, uh, strong people, strong men surround themselves with strong women, mm -hmm. and you should not be afraid. Uh, it's it's a unique experience, and if you if any man out there has not had the opportunity to work with a bunch of women, they need to get out there and do it <laughs> because women have been forced to be the only woman in the room before mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not take over and not control, mm -hmm. but be a collaborative partner mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and help when they can. So That's interesting. People are very, yeah, still very gender aware, but yeah, and you know, in, in everyday life, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, many, many groups are very male dominated and, and, you know, women navigate that every day, but I think we all, you know, we all can support these causes. It's not like, you know, only women mm -hmm. can support r women's rights or, you know, Americans only support American rights. We want to support rights for, for people around the world. Exactly. And uh, that brings up the gag order that uh, they passed uh, saying that the, you, no American funds can be used to talk, even talk about abortion around the world. With mm -hmm. our, and that has repercussions. Glo that will have global repercussions for women everywhere. And so it's being able to figure out what we can do to counteract that mm -hmm. and making sure. So yeah, okay. this is the what this is the bill uh, or the the policy just uh, President Trump just signed yes. um, um, that would yeah limit uh, funds for for reproductive and other medical services for women for women where you know, any, they even speak about yeah contraceptive uh, abortion abortion or mm -hmm. any or even family planning mm -hmm. it, that's how bad this that's mm -hmm. how bad it is and you notice how they never talk about men's reproductive rights it's always they're going after the women and they figure. I, I think that that the new administration made the mistake of thinking, oh, I'm going to pick on, I'm going to pick on women, and I think women spoke back in huge ways on mm -hmm. Saturday, saying mm -hmm. we're not going to let you do that. Mm -hmm. So doubly important then for the Women's March and other associated groups. You, mm -hmm. you know, definitely you all probably are watching this and saying, okay, the march really isn't shouldn't be the end. Oh, and definitely isn't, and that's why we, we encourage everybody to go to our website. Uh, again, uh, womensmarchhawaii.com mm -hmm. to get engaged. Go to our Facebook page. We are putting out action alerts daily right now. There's so much to be done. Our different uh, supporting organizations have a lot of things coming up, especially with the legislative mm -hmm. session coming, um, that we need to make sure that they put forth a progressive, liberal, protective barrier for Hawaii that are, sends a message to the new administration that Hawaii will take care of our own if you won't take care of us. Mm -hmm. That um, we need a living wage. We need to make sure that everybody has access to health care. And we may have led the nation, but we need to lead again when it comes to health care mm -hmm. and taking care of each other. Mm -hmm. And that is what my hope is, me personally, my hope is from this legislative session that every bill they pass, that the legislators think about who does this help? Mm -hmm. How does this protect us? How does this protect all of us, especially the least amongst us? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the uh, kind of lingering effects of the march. I mean, the organiz organizing for it seems to come together quite quickly 
quickly and it's also left kind of a, an organizational structure that you've just been talking about you know as far as as you know like the women's march organization being the clearinghouse for all these different groups that are involved the actions that they're taking and and you know the information sharing and if you and if anybody watching out there was part of an organization that maybe you didn't support the march for some one reason or another you can still come on board now, get us your information. You can email us at womensmarchhawaii at gmail.com and we will put your information up there. Uh, like I said, we're not limited to just women's, women's rights, economic justice, mm -hmm. environment, everything. We need to take care of each other and uh, making sure that we're all, we're all working together um, because we are stronger together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it seems uh, very, it's pretty impressive how quickly this kind of got together because, you know, uh, I think many of us who observe politics regularly feel like, you know, a lot of Americans can be quite apathetic, mm -hmm. but this, this was surprising as far as the numbers, as, uh, how many people were willing to come out, bear the weather, the parking, the traffic, and, and come, and that, uh, yeah, so many organizations are, were in place but now are, are kind of still being very active. And, and very watchful. Oh yeah, we were we were blown away because the demographics. We had uh, the one sign babies first protest. Mm -hmm. uh, we had a group of uh, our Kapuna show up for the handy van. They came from their uh -huh. citizens' home. Very rowdy group. I, w I uh -huh. hope I, I hope <laughs> had that much energy when I'm their age. We had people in walkers, wheelchairs, scooters, in strollers, in backpacks. Mm -hmm. It was truly a people's march led by women. All right. And yeah. and it was again one of the, one of the safest things I've ever participated with or mm -hmm. ever worked on. With and and uh, it it was worth only getting four hours of sleep a night for the last two months to make sure it happened. <laughs> uh, I like the way you put that. It was a people's march led by women. But yeah, so so we saw everybody come out and many different issues, you know, they're going to be embraced uh, and hopefully advanced and get some momentum. We hear the scientists are planning a march in D.C. in March. Uh, LBGTY are, are also planning events. So, so this kind of idea of marching and organizing I think is really thanks to uh, one of our Kama'aina sisters sisters in, yes. in Hana, so great great for Hawaii and, and the aloha yes. spread. Thank you so much for coming on the program, Michael. Well, thank you for having me, and I appreciate that. All right. All right. Hope to see you again. Okay. Okay. Thank you for joining us today. I'm Grace Chang, your host at Global Connection, so see you here every Thursday at 1 p.m. Aloha. Aloha.